Hey there, welcome to another episode of On The Road. I'm your host, Elaine Cochran, and today we are exploring the rich history of Port Angeles, Washington, and checking out several buildings throughout the city that are on the National Historic Register of America. With so much to cover today, we have no time to waste, so let's get started. As you arrive in the cozy coastal town of Port Angeles, Washington, you can feel the sense of history intertwined with the natural beauty of the region. Serving as a gateway to the Olympic National Park and as a tourist launching point to Victoria, Canada, this town is no stranger to hosting visitors. And while there is plenty to do and see around the community, many of the historic artifacts and architecture go unnoticed. So that is why I am on a mission to discover some of the oldest buildings in the town and learn a little bit more about the local history that Port Angeles has to offer. Did you know that Port Angeles could have been the nation's capital? That's right, on March 3rd, 1862, the federal government, under direction of President Abraham Lincoln, set aside land in Port Angeles, with the purpose being that if the South won the war and took over Washington, D.C., a new capital could be created. This fact is well documented on plaques and monuments throughout Port Angeles. As we make our way into town, I'm immediately captivated by one of the oldest and most recognizable buildings that Port Angeles harbors, the old Lincoln Schoolhouse. This brick structure may look a little bit more like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory than a high school, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. I was fortunate enough to get to sit down with Kathy Estes, the executive director of the Clellan County Historical Society, to learn a little bit more about the true history of this iconic building. I'm the executive director of the Clallam County Historical Society, and I have um, worked for the Historical Society for the past 30 years. I work with a group of men and women who are passionate about saving Clallam County's history and sharing that history, and it's, it's just a marvelous job. We get to, to save what we have here and to be able to share it with people. The school site was set aside by David O'Brien back in the 1890s, and this was set up as a federal reservation, and so the land was off limits to settlement. And then about 1890, the land was opened up for settlement. One thing that you will find when you're looking at Clallam County history is that little towns would um, start, and education was always an extremely important part of any of the settlements. So Port Angeles was a bigger town, and so part of this, the whole reason this area was set up was for public education and so there have been a number of schools here and then Lincoln School was built in 1916 so we just celebrated our 100th birthday and it was the school itself was built because there were so many uh, children who were looking to go to school in this area the area was building up and the schools that were here were older and just couldn't accommodate people and so the Lincoln School was built and it had steam heat. Um, it was it was state of the art when it was built. And the original Lincoln School out here when it was built in 1916 was just the central part that you see that was two stories. The school district made the decision to close the school in 1977-78 that school year. I'm not sure what all the dynamics were for that. I do know in speaking with some of the teachers who were here, the way the school was set up, the classrooms were set up, you would have people, kids walking through a classroom almost in order to get outside or inside. And I believe at the time that it was closed, there was the thought that school should be one level, not two levels, and it was just deemed as surplus. I think that these buildings are fabulous and that they um, should continue to be here. But they, they are built well. I, they give your community 
a sense of community. It's a place that people know. And nowadays, you have buildings that come in and after 10 years are considered obsolete and they may be taken down. The buildings that are here give, give people a sense of place, of time, and community. And I think they're very important for that. And up here uh, on the west side of town, it's everyone does know Lincoln School. It's, this is it's been here. The school has been here since 1916, providing a place of learning, a place I would like to say of joy and happiness for people. And we would like to see that continue. I do know that when we came to purchase the building, um, like I said, all of the windows had been broken out. The uh, the drain pipes had things in them, so we had water damage on the inside. There was a south addition on this building that um, the main part of the south addition was the bathrooms, and it was built very, very well. But they put another section up on top of it, the second floor, that was done very, very poorly. And that was just kind of caving in. We had uh, kind of a joke because there were ferns and different flowers growing out of the, the bricks that were in that part of the building. But it was extremely unsafe. And the grounds, um, there had been fires back here. It just looked like an abandoned mess. And it took many, many years to very slowly go about cleaning things up taking certain parts of the building off, like I said, repairing the windows. My, the guys who did that, and uh, they would find glass from some place and replace the windows. So I think now, and we're working on the property all the time. The lawn needs to be mowed and things like that, and we have limited amount of money. But I think the whole piece of property looks better, and the amount of vandalism that happens here has gone down quite a bit, and I believe part of that is because the building looks like it is being taken care of again. Um, yes, there's been some vandalism. I'm laughing we've become a gated community uh, because we have to limit access um, to part of it. But even the gates we put up on the school, are they were designed and built especially for the school, so we want we want the school, we want the grounds to look nice. We want people to see it and say, oh, they care about that place. And we do. And we brought it back from an absolute mess. There was so much debris in that building. Uh, walls had to be taken out, floors had to be dug up. There were holes everywhere. Um, we would see critters wandering around all the time. So we, we have brought Lincoln School back to a state of It's put together well, it's loved, and we are working together on the it. Getting to walk around and explore this antiquated building and hear more about its history has really got me thinking about what other hidden treasures can be found within Port Angeles. So let's continue our journey into the heart of the community. deeper into the center of the city, you can see tons of examples of Port Angeles's history. From the city courthouse to the pier, the atmosphere and the architecture is almost as alluring as the view of the Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Olympic Mountains. But I wanted to stop and take a closer look at one of the most impressive constructions, the Port Angeles Masonic Temple. So let's check out the inside of this historic structure and learn a little bit more about its involvement in the evolution of this city.
The Masonic Temple of Port Angeles has been home to generations of memories, and it's no wonder that this building is such a recognizable staple in this town. So as we've been exploring the history of this unique coastal place, I have heard of an exceptional tourist attraction that takes visitors under the very streets of downtown and uncovers the buried past of Port Angeles. Let's see if we can find out more about this. We have arrived at the heartbeat of Port Angeles, the downtown district. With so many busy activities taking place on the streets, it's no wonder that many people don't even realize the history that lies beneath. Back in 1914, the entire waterfront was raised about 12 feet. This process preserved an entire underground that people can still see today. So to get a look at this lost part of the city and receive some historical insights surrounding the downtown area, we connected with local tour guide Bruce Irwin to take us into the underground. is a very recognizable member of the Port Angeles community and is the resident tour guide for the Port Angeles Underground Heritage Tour operated by the Black Ball Ferry Line. This two and a half hour walking tour takes visitors all around the downtown area, visiting secret spots where history has been preserved. Before heading out into the underground, Bruce gives his guests some historical context about the reasoning and process behind the raising of the waterfront, known as sluicing. This hill just on the east side of town was known as a hogback. The process they used was called sluicing. They had an abundance of water in the local area. Sluicing was used in the California gold rush days. It was a high volume of water that they hit hillsides with and turned all that dirt into mud and ran it down the hill through the sluice boxes and that's how they harvested their gold. Here we didn't have gold so we yeah. just really wanted the mud but it was a very effective process. 
After stopping off at an ancient underground miniature golf course, the original projection booth for the historic Lincoln Theater, and a high-class brothel hidden in plain sight, we finally made it to the underground. I was surprised at how well lit the subterranean tunnels were, utilizing an ingenious skylight system connecting it to the world above. The oldest building in the downtown area, the Family Shoe Store, was actually built in 1890, the same year that the Port Angeles Township was established. Our underground was huge at one point in time, and unfortunately we couldn't maintain it for all up until today. Yeah. But we were able to preserve that one stretch of sidewalk, and that gives us a great glimpse of what we had going on at, in this town at that point. In 1914, our whole entire downtown area was actually located on the tidal flats, and on the east, west end of town, it was raised up six feet, and on the east end of town, it was raised 15 feet. We actually have seven buildings in the downtown area that are original, were built prior to 1914. Three of them still sit on their original foundation in their original position. Every other building in town was torn down after this project was done. So underneath them are huge cavernous voids and wooden platforms that those buildings are set on. Seeing this forgotten about world is truly a fascinating experience, but hearing the engaging stories shared by Bruce helped provide the context that makes this tour truly remarkable. On average, we get, we get 30 to 35 days per year that drop below freezing, and up until this winter, we haven't even had measurable snowfall in downtown Port Angeles in the last three years. A hundred years ago though, it was nothing to get 60, 90, sometimes 120 days that would drop below freezing. And with all the precipitation we get in this area, we could have seven to 10 feet of snow backed up in downtown Port Angeles. It, absolutely incredible winters. Now, this picture was taken in 1913, and it does not show seven to 10 feet of snow. I'm sorry. But it does show across the street, the main road that we had through the town, and that was also our waterfront. And you can see that snow and ice coming all the way down to the water's edge. The winters that we had out here made life way out in the middle of nowhere incredibly difficult. In such a short amount of time, my understanding of Port Angeles has become so much deeper. building is actually the third meeting place of the Elks Club in this town. The original uh, meeting was at the Oddfellows Hall in 1896 when this club was formed in this town. The second building that the Elks Club resided in is the building next door to this current building that belongs to the Independent Bible Church at this point are quite proud of this building. It's rather unique in this town. We haven't changed it a whole lot, and so some of the furnishing looks fairly original from the 1930s. When it was first built, there was a swimming pool in the basement, also a bowling alley, which now houses just an athletic facility, which is pretty nice. And it was very state-of-the-art as far as how it was constructed. It was a new process of concrete, and steel beams. Organizations like the Elks Club uh, used to be the big thing to do. When this club was formed uh, back in the 30s and this building was built, there were 4,000 members. As you imagine, things have changed in the country and people's ideas of what to do with their spare time and all of that. There's been huge changes. Well, when this club was formed, there was no TV. This was a place to go for to meet your friends and have entertainment, that sort of stuff. Now everybody's carrying a computer around in their hand. They're not so interested in joining clubs like this. 
the idea of going downtown and spending uh, your evening uh, dancing and partying until uh, one o'clock in the morning, those days are over. So we have found other ways to keep people interested in joining and uh, participating in our club. So we have three charities that we donate to. So we have the Tall Oaks Charity, so it's a therapy program for kids, so where the insurance stops, that's where we pick up. We have our own therapy uh, therapists that come in and take care of the kids, and then that's where our funds come in. We pay the therapists and we help with their therapy. Uh, we have a wing at Children's Hospital over in Seattle, and we also have scholarships that we give out to local kids in the community. We're proud that we have probably the best and only real ballroom in this community and we're able to loan that out or rent that out to private parties which uh, is a source of income for us and it also is a community asset in that uh, things like the uh, Wanda Fuca Festival can use this building, people with class reunions, wedding receptions and the like. Oh, we have all kinds of stuff in the Elks Lodge. We have a fantastic ballroom, we have a gym, we have a member's lounge that we love spending time in. Um, we have a beautiful lodge room that we get to have all of our meetings in. And we have a haunted house that we do every year that's set up on the fifth floor. Visitors can schedule tours with Bruce and the Port Angeles Underground Heritage Tours online. With so much history covered in the tour, this is a must for history buffs and anyone traveling through town. I now see the entire downtown area in a completely different way, layered with the history of Port Angeles' past. And this doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of all that there is to do in the downtown area, including renowned restaurants and eateries, fudge shops, antique stores, and even a waterfront park. But if you'll excuse me for just one moment, I am famished. the whole day traveling through Port Angeles, Washington in search of some of the oldest buildings and to explore its incredibly rich history. We got a rare look inside the old Lincoln Schoolhouse, walked through the Port Angeles Masonic Temple, and even went on a tour of the downtown underground. But the real treat was getting to visit with members of the Clallam County Historical Society, Port Angeles Masons, and Underground Heritage Tours to learn more about how this city began and how it's evolved over the years. I hope that this journey was as rewarding for you as it was for me. Until next time, you've been watching On the Road with Elaine Cochran. I want to thank you so much for exploring Port Angeles with me, and I cannot wait for our next adventure together. I'll see you then. Bye!